and welcome to TCM Sunday School. Now, I'm in the garden, so I wanted you to try and work out which I am of Jesus we're looking at today. Now, if you remember, when we went on our dog walk, we found the most amazing tree. Do you remember? It was called an ash tree. Now, it just so happens that we have one in our garden too. And it's fully grown. Now, apparently, they can live up to 400 years old. Now, I'm not sure how old this one is, but it is really big. Now, when Jesus was talking about I am the vine, he was thinking about four important things. And we can understand that more by looking and understanding how a tree works. So, underneath my feet here, there's a huge root ball that is attached to the tree. And that's how the tree sucks up all the water from the ground. And it's absolutely huge. Now, the water then travels all the way up to the trunk and then out to the branches. And you can see up at the top how big the branches are. Now the water reaches the branches and then the branches produce leaves and this ash tree is about to burst forth into all its fullness of leaves. Now there's four things there that we can understand about how a tree works and that means that Jesus has got four things for us to understand. The main one being that we're to be attached to Jesus. We're going to go inside and we're going to learn a little bit more about what that looks like. Well, we made it inside just in time because I'm not sure if you can see behind me, but it's just started to rain. So good job we're inside. Now we were looking at the ash tree, which I've currently got growing out of my head, but we were looking at how a tree works. Now I wanted to consider what Jesus meant when he said, I am the vine. So what I thought would be helpful would be to take a plant and to show you how Jesus was using this illustration to talk about himself. So I popped into our church this week. I go in and collect bits that I need for these videos. And I came across this very sorry looking plant. Now you've probably walked past it lots of times and not really thought about it much. But it's actually looking very sick. So I thought this would be great to bring home and to show you what Jesus meant. So what we're going to do is give it a little bit of help. So I've got a whole new pot here for it. There we go. And I've put some more soil in it. And we're going to take this one out of its old pot because that's no good for it. It's too small. And we're going to put it into the new pot. Okay, so we're giving it a brand new home. We're going to put some more soil in. Here we go. Put that in so that we can help it have everything that it needs to grow really well. There we go. Now, hopefully, in a couple of weeks' time, with some more water and a bit more light, it will grow and be a great plant again. So let's have a think then about what Jesus meant. Now in this instance, I'm the gardener. I'm the one doing the work. So that means that I'm being a little bit like God. I'm not God, let's just make that clear. But for this illustration, as the gardener, I am God. Now, God made the world for us to live in. He gave us a good environment to live in. Now, just like this pot here is a good environment now for the plant to grow in, it's like being the world that God made. Then we talked about the tree and the trunk and its roots that draw up all the water to feed the branches, well, that's the vine part that Jesus was talking about. Jesus said, I am the vine. 
He's the main trunk, if you like, that draws up the water and feeds the branches. And that's his word, how he teaches us through the Bible and the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. And it produces these branches. And Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. So the branches are us. So we've got God, who's the gardener. We've got the pot, that is the world that we live in. We have the, the vine, the trunk, if you like, that is Jesus, that feeds the branches, which are us. Now, what grows on branches? Well, on some trees, there's fruit that's produced, but mainly they're leaves. But we are going to move this illustration on and we're going to consider something else that is talked about in the Bible. It's in Galatians 5, verse 22, and it's called the fruit of the Spirit. A branch produces fruit, and we, like the branches, should produce fruit. But on this plant, because it's sick, there's bits that are falling off. And Jesus talks about in the Bible that some of the branches will fall off because they're not attached. They're not attached to the main trunk. And sometimes in life, people don't want to know Jesus. And so they're like the branches that fall off. Jesus said that he wants us to feed on him so that we can produce the fruit of the spirit and that's what we're going to start looking at now now we've got a game that we're going to go and play again outside hopefully not in the rain and what we're going to do is i've hidden around the garden lots of different fruit there's nine of them now before we go out we do this a lot at sunday school so you should know them i want you to write down very quickly the nine fruit of the spirit there's nine of them write down now on a piece of paper your list of the nine fruit of the spirit then we're going to go out into the garden we're going to go on a hunt and we're going to discover if you've got all nine we'll see you out there okay so you ready for the fruit hunt remember to check your list be looking around at all the trees and when you stop i'll know that you've found one okay let's go oh you've stopped you found one yay a banana let's find out which fruit's on the back patience is it on your list let's keep going You've stopped again. This one? Joy. Okay, let's go. This time we found a lemon. Kindness. Next one's tricky. You found it. Hey, it's a pear coming off my pear tree. Gentleness. Gentleness, okay? Keep going. It's a clue, it's an apple tree. A goodness. Keep going. And the strawberry. Love. Let's keep going. Three more to find. Got it? Okay, great. Faithfulness. Okay, two left. Well done. Peace. Got one more left to find. Now this one is a bit 
lower down. Well done, last one. Self-control. Did you get all nine? Well done. Okay, so I hope you got all nine fruit. Well done if you did. Now, fruit is amazing. We all love a good piece of fruit. But fruit isn't there just to look pretty or taste good. It's actually good for our health too. It's good to be eating fruit because there's so many good things in it that feed us and make us healthy and stronger. And so it's really important that we eat it. And Jesus said when we produce fruit, the fruit of the spirit, those nine things that we've been looking at, they're good for us. But better than that, they're good for other people too. It shows Jesus to other people. By being loving and by being kind and gentle, we are demonstrating Jesus to everybody around us. So we need to share this fruit. Now, I don't know about you, but my family love a bowl of fresh fruit salad in the morning. So I've made one and I thought, I really want to share this with someone. So I know that you've probably missed him. So I thought I'd invite him back. So Milo, here he is, Milo's back. But I'm warning you, he's in a bit of a cheeky mood today, being a little bit naughty, but keep an eye on him. He's not here for too long, so don't worry. Now, Milo, do you like fruit salad? Yes, that's good. Would you like to share some of my fruit salad? Okay, shall we share with Milo? We've got strawberries and oranges and grapes and blueberries. We've got loads of bits and pieces. Stop picking your nose, Milo. I told you. Anyway, there's your fruit salad, Milo. So why don't you have a go at making a fruit salad at home and sharing it with your family and have a think about your life. Are you attached to Jesus? Are you reading your Bible? Are you spending time with other people that love Jesus? Are you praying to God? Because they're all the things that Feed us what we need in order to be the branches that produce fruit, which means then that we can share Jesus with others. Have a think about that when you're making and sharing your fruit salad. I want to finish off this session by reading from the Bible. But I need my glasses because I'm going a bit blind. And I'm going to read everything that sums up what we've been looking at today. Are you ready, Milo, for this? It's in John chapter 15. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. Every branch in me that does not produce fruit, he removes and he prunes every branch that produces fruit so that it will produce more fruit. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I in you. Just as a branch is unable to produce fruit by itself unless it remains on the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me. Isn't that great news, Milo? So next week, our special thing that we're going to do that we don't normally do in Sunday school, ready Milo? I want you to bring your most favourite ball. It can be any size of ball. It could be a football, a basketball, a marble. You decide. So I will see you next week.